Okay, so the uh, Chancellor this week announced a series of measures that I sort of think went way beyond anything that the rest of us were considering might happen. There were some, uh, before he did it, there was some kind of, well, maybe he might drop the VAT from 20% down to 15. Uh, then there was, he wasn't going to do that. He was maybe going to give 500 quid to each person to go out and, uh, and eat within hospitality. But in terms of hospitality this week, he has produced some absolutely blinding new changes in terms of what we're doing. And they will make a fundamental difference in terms of your business and, <clears throat> and, and how you can operate over the next six to nine months. Um, and I want to, I'm going to run through them today um, and give you some context in, what, in terms of what I think you need to do next. So this piece now is what I've been, if you've been watching these videos or, or following what I've been saying since the start of this whole Cafe Insights process, uh, I talked about phase one was whenever lockdown happened and we didn't know what was going on, you know, toilet roll, etc. Uh, phase two was the whole lockdown period where lots of people stayed shut and lots of people also operated. And in some cases, with a lot of the interviews that we did, they, uh, they've they actually operated extremely well and pivoted in all of those kinds of terms. We've got all of those interviews in the past, but I've been saying since the beginning uh, or, or since this thing started to develop, this phase, phase three, post lockdown, is going to be the most brutal phase. And I've had a lot of kind of frustration in terms of uh, clients and, and non-clients that I've been working with in terms of my Facebook groups uh, and just emails, uh, not quite grasping why I've been so concerned about this. Uh, I was on a Zoom call with a client the other day and he said to me, you're sounding very pessimistic in a lot of your recent email and a lot of your recent videos. And kind of my view on that is it was absolutely categorically yes. I have been very, very concerned about this phase. And the reason for that is because obviously with clients, I help to produce projected profit and loss and projected cash flows. And within those, you see um, there's kind of, there's a phase that we're in now where there's still a lot of furlough. Um, but whenever people have to start to come back to work, uh, those costs just go through the roof. And gradually during this phase, and certainly until the end of October, under the original arrangement, um, then everybody needs to come back to work or be made redundant. And when you look at that on, a project, on projections for nearly all businesses that I'm working with, uh, there's some really painful months. Um, and if they're not painful months, that means people are being made redundant. So there's just pain all around. And that's why I've been so pessimistic and sometimes been sort of pushing, I suppose, quite hard for people to, to really sort of focus in on doing a number of key things for their business. So anyway, I'm less pessimistic and I'll tell you why. He announced essentially four key measures. So yeah, why was I? Well, let me go through some of the reasons. Furlough was dropping off, uh, increased supplier costs again. So when I do these projections with people and I hear that this supplier's put this up and that up, uh, or maybe there's more takeaway packaging or a few other things, margins are being really eroded for nearly all clients. And I don't know whether you've done that in your own business. Uh, the 50% seating, how long is that going to last? And the problem with the 50% seating is it's also been accompanied by some sense of table service costs. Now, we know those aren't maybe quite as high as we thought they might be. Track and trace costs are less than we thought, but it is still an overhead into the business. And for many people, they're also paying for pieces of software on a monthly basis or have had to pay to put that together. Uh, also, you know, <laughs> for some clients, the customers are just gone. Um, I have a client in the centre of London near all of the banks and a lot of the American banks are not opening up again properly until January. So, and that's, that's just one client. There are lots of clients in, in lots of different areas, unfortunately, who are in that position. We have another, there's, there's a, a girl in the, um, uh, in the Facebook group who unfortunately has had to close her business uh, and she's been there since the beginning and it's, it's really brutal because her business was up on one of the Scottish islands and all the boats aren't just going to come in. So the customers in many cases are gone uh, for, for many operators. Uh, you also have this situation whereby in certain situations, competitors have opened and maybe stolen some market share. And also we're starting to see, and it's already happened, the likes of Pret doing some aggressive discounting. Without going into too much detail of that, it's, it's, it's this issue whereby you have other businesses like Pret, like Greg's, like um, you know, Weatherspoons or, or whoever, where coffee is an incremental purchase for them. 
there's a lot of margin in it. They can pull people in with very inexpensive coffee to then purchase the rest of what they do. And I think there's going to be a lot of that then eroding into our marketplace and that little pred gesture of 20 pounds for 20 coffees, I believe is the tip of the iceberg in terms of that. Uh, there's no point in saying otherwise we are, you know, I've been saying we're moving into the deepest recession. Uh, if, if you really monitor, we're in the middle of the deepest recession that certainly I've seen and I am getting old. Uh, and then, of course, you look, I don't really want to venture down the route of the of the second wave piece, but we know that the the reality of a second wave is possible. OK, so as I say, I look through these cash flows, I look through these P&L projections and I see for some clients at the moment, you know, very small losses and then suddenly losses of thousands of pounds every month if they're going to start to bring people back. And that's why I'm so pessimistic. But we have four very useful things that the Chancellor has put out there. And I want to go through those and illustrate to you how they will affect your business. So the first one is the VAT piece, which is kind of so far beyond what anybody was expecting. 20% to 5% from July the 15th to the 12th of January 2021. Uh, it's for eating, hot takeaway, drinks, uh, but not alcohol. And I think this is, there's something really interesting about this in terms of the cafe and coffee shop industry, is that what he has announced is really specifically beneficial for, for us, as it were, in that industry. Um, I have some uh, friends in the pub industry and obviously they are, they're much less happy. Um, and also that full restaurant market, and I've got some clients in that market too, you know, the, 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 there's some issues with that as well because the alcohol hasn't been eaten, but obviously being included. But he couldn't be seen to be encouraging people to drink and I think that's fundamentally a good thing. For our business, it's brilliant because it's pretty much for most of us, that's most of our purchases. So the details of it, the details are still a little bit vague. The flat rate piece, we don't know, but I would suggest that, uh, uh, you know, I've had lots of emails, lots of comments in the in the Facebook group and everybody's just going, we, we need to wait and see because lots of people are on some of those flat rates. Uh, lots of people who haven't been open for that long are on those flat rates that apply for, uh, for coffee shops. And I would suggest it'll just be that it drops to 5%, but we need a little bit more detail. Whatever way you look at it, it's going to be enormously beneficial for you. Now, the key thing about the VAT piece is, and that there was a debate in the group um, uh, last night about this, and I think this is, this is really important to emphasize. The way that he's laid this out is actually very clever. The VAT reduction is for you. It's really important that you don't use it to then, it's not for the consumer. It, it, it's to prop up the industry. Uh, it's to allow you that 15% to do a number of key things that I'll come to. The eat out to help out scheme is for the customer. Um, and that's this thing that in August, um, Monday to, it's not Monday to Friday, actually, it's Monday to Wednesday, sorry, that's a typo. Uh, you get 50% off up to £10 per head. Again, it's no alcohol uh, and you must register the registration page is not open at the time that I'm talking about this, but you need to register, but in theory, you get the money back very quickly. Uh, so you really need to use this piece. And I've got some clients in Wales who, you know, who may not be open properly. So I know there are some problems with this that aren't quite as simple as that. But this is, if you use it right, this is a really, really beneficial way to to encourage people into your business and also to encourage people into your business on those days that are for most people, more dead, as it were. So you should be considering some form of an offer that is kind of very, very strongly tied into what you do, uh, that is value driven, but it must be really all about your customer. You need to look at it and think, well, how can I get them in with an offer that, uh, that helps to tap into that eating out piece so that they come to you rather than all of your competitors who will be doing various things or rather than going to a restaurant or rather than going to a pub um, where I I'm just feeling comfortable that they will spend the money on the alcohol piece. So in theory, you've got up to £20 a head um, that, that will then be discounted to £10 a head and then you get the money back. But do not do, you've got to think this piece through. Don't just give them the VAT. Just don't go, our offer is that we're going to give the VAT back to you. That is a rush to the bottom. And you are basically, 
you know, it, it, it's actually not a brilliant discount that you're giving them because you're basically just giving them a 15% discount. You really want to be giving them something that's very value driven, that they can sit there and think this is really good value. And if you have an alcohol license, uh, you then look at, I don't know, let's say for the family of family of four, um, two adults then would feel comfortable then to purchase the alcohol on top of that because the whole amount isn't going to be very much. So look at how you can manage your model. Everybody's model is different, but look at how you can maybe twist your menu or what you're doing to try and tie into that a little bit better. Now, the third thing that he's done, so we've dealt with the VAT piece is essentially for you and your business. The, uh, the eat out to eat in scheme is, um, you know, to help our scheme is, is, is for the consumer to get them out, but you're going to have to do the heavy lifting in that in terms of promoting it through your social media and all of those ways that you do promote, hopefully at the moment, at, at the moment anyway. The third piece, and I think this is a really, really important piece. This is this kind of furlough payment that he's giving. If you bring people, people back from furlough uh, and keep them through until the 31st of January. So the details are thousand pounds, when you bring them back, they need to be at, at least £520 per month. Uh, and that will have been through November, December and January. And those are obviously the three months where all the furlough is gone because the full furlough stops um, on uh, at the end of, of the end of October. So you need to kind of look at your cash flow and look at this and think, right, um, how, how will that work for me? £1,000 isn't a huge amount. Um, sorry, let me finish this piece off. So they, they also need to have been previously furloughed and you need to be employing them until the end of, uh, right up until the 31st of January. Now, as I say, this piece is about giving you a chance to stop the redundancies. So for lots of clients, we sit there and we look at the projections and the profit and loss. And when it's down there in this kind of brutal three or 4,000 pounds worth of loss at the end of each of those months, um, you need, you've got to make some pretty tough decisions. Now, lots of people um, have made a strong decision that they will have no redundancies, and I have huge respect for that. Uh, and lots of people are just not potentially able to afford to do that. This doesn't necessarily cover all of that, doesn't cover maybe all of those furlough payments if you're going to be in a market where uh, those, uh, where, where you've got We've got very low sales if, you're, if where your sales are really building back up again. But it really gives you a chance to be able to look at your staffing and think, actually, there's a little bit of work we can do here. And I will take a bit of a hit, but I can avoid redundancies because we've got that little bit of extra money coming through. So there will be more details on this coming through in July the 31st and then full further details in autumn. But uh, right now, I think there, I know why he's done this right now, because Obviously, the furlough starts to ease off. They, the furlough support has started to ease off in um, at the start of July. So the redundancies have already started. Some of the big names are already making big redundancies from the start of July. Uh, and there's no doubt there's going to be a, a bigger chunk of that coming in um, at the start of August. And then another bigger chunk in September. And then obviously another whole wave of that. So he's doing it now in an effort so that you can sit there look your way through it and not necessarily make the decision as it were today because you look at your projections and think there's no way I can keep those people. So I think there's an awful lot of this stuff is very cleverly thought out in terms of <clears throat> allowing you to take a pause at the very least in terms of looking at the business and thinking what, can, what do we do. You then need to claim by February 21 and I believe you get paid at in February 21, so there's more details coming through. Now, the fourth piece is this kickstart scheme, which I think is really interesting. And I think it's interesting because I think a lot of, uh, in fact, an awful lot of the trade press have ignored this piece. And I think this is really, I think this is a huge opportunity for you and your business. So this piece is another opportunity for you, but what he's trying to do here then is kickstart the economy. So I read something, um, uh, yesterday basically saying that 70% of graduates, 70% uh, less graduates, are, they're just not getting a job. And I kind of thought that's kind of shocking. And then you think about it and think, well, actually, it's almost shocking that it's not worse than that. Um, so this piece is about him looking at the fact that you've got, he's trying to support 350 odd uh, thousand 18 to 24 year olds. And they need to be claiming universal credit 
um, and you then provide them with a six month placement and he will provide 100% of the uh, national minimum wage uh, up to 25 hours a week. Now, there are a couple of things you can do with that. Uh, you can top that up yourself, but you could, you know, uh, as I say, I think this is a huge opportunity because there are two things with this. So the first piece of that is you could actually just get somebody in and train them up and have a line, as it were, on your profit and loss, whereby your wage bill is not as much as you would hope. I don't think, I think, there's, sorry, there's, there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't believe that's full use of what you could get here. Because I think what you could do if you are clever about this is you could get people in, uh, you could get graduates in, and during this whole phase, you could, you could, one of the things that's happened since, for, uh, since lockdown is that a number of clients have said to me um, that they've been kind of wanting to get involved with some of the work that I do, but just haven't had the time. And, uh, and this has now given them the time so they can do all sorts of reinvention in their, sometimes total reinvention in their business. And also sometimes um, just tweaking and adjusting all of the core pieces um, that, that there are uh, improvements that need to be happening in, the business, in their business. So if you watch the 100 days of lockdown video that I did, uh, I'll, be able to, I'll, I'll show you how to get a, a copy of that at the end. That's the distillation of all of those interviews that I've done over that period of time and in terms of the commonalities between the people who have survived really well and who I believe will continue to thrive on into the future. And all of them, one of the commonalities is they all worked really hard on their business. Lockdown happened and they just looked at everything that they were doing wrong in the business and started to change systems, processes, training, etc., and work on the margins and things. So this allows you to get somebody in who could then be working partly in the business, but also helping you to work on the business during this period of time where you may not be as quiet as you maybe thought before. Now you need to have a, you, you kind of need to, it'll force you to really look at the business and, um, and, and see what you could do, what that person could do over that period of time. But it is free money and if you do it well, you're actually giving not just your business an opportunity, you are giving somebody a really good opportunity to see the proper workings of a business and you have the potential to have somebody in who's also really well uh, trained. So within my own consulting business, um, I'm gonna get one of these guys uh, or girls. Uh, my uh, partner and her business who I'm involved with as well, we're gonna get another one for that too. Um, and uh, the, 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 the pool of people out there who can be utilized for this is enormous. It's absolutely enormous. And, and I think that's a pretty brutal reality in terms of the whole global pandemic. And I have a 22 year old daughter, so I kind of understand just how horrendous it is. Uh, th their lives are on pause for most of them. Um, and, um, you know, so I was about to start waffling on about my daughter, but, the, um, but, but lots and lots of kids from 18, 16, 17, 18, 19, sort of into their twenties, their lives are pretty much on pause and this allows you to actually do something really interesting and, and get them in and really show them the nuts and bolts of a business and um, rather than just sort of uh, sitting on the dole as we used to say or um, you know just not just or, or, or working in a, in a very simple shop and or, or, or some sort of a situation a normal minimum wage situation so I think the opportunity here is huge and I'm going to give you some more details about that in another video so what do I believe you should do at the moment I could have waffled on for hours in this but there there are a number of key things you've got to get out the cash flow you've got to get out your projected profit and loss if you don't have those uh, I've done training and I've got templates in those. Click the link below and I'll take you through to those resources again. I did a live in my Facebook group again uh, this morning, basically on the same version of this and lots of people hadn't seen that stuff. So click the link below and I'll it'll take you through to a page where I'll do a couple of different things. I'll give you all of that training again in terms of your cash flow and, pro and, and, and projected profit and loss. And then at the moment I am creating a whole new training which was supposed to go out this week, but has now completely changed as a result of this. And it's about what I believe you should be doing now and for the next six to nine months. And it's based on, this, on a lot of the work that I'm doing with my clients. It's based on those learnings from the 100 days. And now it's based on these pieces of opportunity that the Chancellor has provided for us. 
there's going to be, I'm going to show you the, the, um, what I believe you need to be doing with your existing staff at the moment. I was going to put this into this training, but it, it, it's quite a long piece. But basically, you need to sit down with your staff and have a meeting and go through all of this and really get them on board. There's a whole process in terms of trying to get them to understand that we are all in this together. I am I'm acutely aware that within the whole global pandemic, that is an overused line. And, uh, and there, you know, there is very much a rich and a poor divide, but ignore that at the moment. Within the context of this, you need the staff on board because in many cases you may well, this may well be about the survival of your business. So there's an important piece in that training. I'm gonna show you what I believe you should be doing in terms of your menu. And I'm gonna show you how to put all of those projections together and then kind of rebuild the business back up. But we're now talking about those original projections that I did a few weeks ago. It's now very much, okay, let's look for nine months rather than the original six months. Uh, so that piece is extended. So am I still pessimistic? Well, the interesting thing is uh, I am, yes, but less so. I then had a conversation this morning with Darren Gardner, who is a friend of mine and uh, right back from Northern Ireland, uh, but he's an extraordinarily good operator. And he has got 29 locations in various parts of Northern Ireland, I think in some of the South and also in Scotland. He also has another whole business where he employs an enormous amount of people in that as well. Very, very good operator. And we had some communication by messenger this morning after, uh, after all of this. And he basically said, well, what was useful for me, I didn't prompt him to do any of this. He says the real challenge and the question that needs answers is how long is the actual recovery going to take? Because if you look at your business, you still have this situation whereby there is a cat, there are all of these projections and we've got six to nine months and we don't really know actually how long this is going to drag on. Now, he said then, and he's very happy for me to quote this, we have stores that are trending upwards by, a much, by as much as 20% with lower labor costs and a restricted menu. And we all know those stories because I've been interviewing a lot of those people. Uh, and then on the other hand, we have a handful of stores that are down as much as 75% because of their location. And this is the brutal reality of what's happening all around the countryside. Some people are actually in locations where this, particularly in the phase two where they have done very well, but that is going to ease off that lower costs, restricted menu, takeaway thing is already going to stop as everybody else starts to open. And then as everybody else starts to open, those locations like that, that he has, uh, may, you know, being down as much as 75%, uh, that may be your situation. It's almost certainly the situation for people around you. Um, you may be in a lucky location, you may be in a not in a lucky location. He then said, I still maintain that people, this is the key point, that people do not realise the situation that we are in. The government doesn't give out money for nothing. They're giving incentives and hard cash because they know what is coming. And that's at the very gist of what I've been saying here today. Uh, Rishi Sunak has taken this opportunity because he saw what was coming. And there has been, as far as I'm concerned, this tsunami of redundancies that he has seen and this tsunami of businesses going bust. They're not paying their bounce back loans. Uh, or their C bills, or uh, or just their VAT debt, or whatever their suppliers. He's seen a tsunami of pain coming out there, and that is why he has taken these gestures. And I believe, and this is not a political statement in any way. Uh, I would not necessarily want to uh, nail my colours to that mast, but I actually think he's done quite a good job in this from this perspective. Um, he then said, and I think this is the critical thing just to tie in with what I was saying as well, we've introduced some incredibly positive things in terms of our own food production and improvements to our offer, which also without a shadow of a doubt is paying a considerable dividend in terms of gross profit wastage. And we are positive that we will come through this stronger, but there is still going to be six to nine months of constant juggling ahead. So I think that therein lies a really key point in terms of all of this. It's, it's if you have not done that work on your business, you really need to do it now. And I, I am seeing some clients who he's saying the work that he's done, and I know he, he has, I'm just kind of smirking during that because I know he's been up with the crack of dawn in one of his shops and actually working, you know, we've got 29 shops and he's actually working there in the shop, trying to reestablish the whole thing because they've got a, they've got a, a variety of different offers. He's in there grafting. He is a proper grafter and he's got GP improvements. A lot of people have got massive GP reductions, maybe not massive, but certainly three, four, five percent GP reductions. Uh, and there's a whole wave of wastage um, is happening. So he has gone in there, he's done the work, he sees all of this that's happening, 
but uh, and, and I would have no doubt that he'd be okay. But the point is, uh, you know, as much as anything else, it's this piece. I still do not. I still maintain that people do not realize the situation we're in. So anyway, click the link below. Uh, we'll get you those projections. We will get you then more of the links in terms of how this all works. And then I'll also send you that next piece of training. Um, I'll send you that next piece of training, which is about uh, what I believe you need to do now. And if you're already on my list, you'll probably get that anyway. But, but it's worth signing up for this next piece just because it's kind of like a, this changes every week. So this will get you in a new wave of that, um, um, of, of this next phase of information. Um, and uh, I uh, will be doing that training and that should be out tomorrow. So hopefully that was of some benefit, but that was say, click the link below, sign up for that. And then I'll tell you exactly what I believe or in more detail what I think you need to be doing in your business off the back of this.